All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. Not officially, but teaching from home. Um, had a bit of an accident, but I'm at home resting, getting better, slowly but surely. Uh, for those of you who are seniors, I may or may not see you again before the year's over. So we're going to pick up in geometry kind of where we left off. Uh, last section was 4.1. Um, graded your tests. I'm going to get those into power school uh, for chapter three. Um, but now we're going to move on to 4.2, supplying congruence and triangles. So remember that even though it was a while ago, congruence meant that they were the same shape and the same size, right? Um, if we had congruent segments, that meant that they were the same length. So the segments were the same size. Uh, congruent angles meant that the angles were the same size. Now we're going to move forward into shapes along with congruence. So as we look to apply congruence to triangles, two geometric figures are congruent if they have exactly the same size and shape. So if we're looking at congruent figures here, these would all be congruent figures. It does not matter that this one is over here and turned sideways. It doesn't make a difference. It's still the same exact size and shape as this one. If you need proof, then I can twist it, drag it over, and set it on top. And it's going to be exactly the same size and shape. Same thing with this shape. Now, these are not triangles, as you may have noticed already. These are trapezoids. But for any congruent figure, it has to be the same size and shape is the one that you're saying that it's congruent to. So those all stack up and they're exactly the same. That's what congruence means. So congruent figures have to be exactly the same size and shape. So we move forward. They're not congruent. Uh, if you look at some of these triangles, they're the same shape as other ones. For instance, this one is a right triangle, just like this one is. We could drag it out and make it possibly the same size, but it's not the same size to begin with. Originally only this big, so you have to leave it that big, which means they're not congruent. Okay, most of you have had Malik before, so you know how these videos work. Sometimes you're going to have to pause them in order to... Uh, Make sure that you get everything written down that you need to get written down. Um, today is going to be the lesson starter, just like we've always done. I'll give you a homework assignment. Tomorrow we'll go over the homework assignment, and you'll start the next one. In two congruent figures, all the parts of one figure are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other figure. What that means is this means that the corresponding sides and corresponding angles have to be congruent. So if we have two triangles here, where we have ABC and DEF, then the sides that correspond to each other, which would be AB, and DE are congruent. BC and EF are congruent. And AC and DF are congruent. So those are all the corresponding sides. Now we do need this little piece of information at the bottom that wasn't shown, showing that the two triangles are congruent to begin with. Because our theorem says that it starts with two congruent triangles. So we know AB is congruent to DE. Like I said before, AB is congruent to DE. BC is congruent to EF. And AC 
is congruent to df. But it doesn't just stop with sides. We also know that the angles are congruent too. So we also know that angle A is congruent to angle D. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C is congruent to angle F. <clears throat> so we can tell that from the figures. If you look at this, B is the same size as E. BC is the same size as EF. There's another way to do this because the order has to be exactly the same. So in the name triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. That means that A and D have to be the same. B and E have to be the same. And C and F have to be the same. By the same token, AB, that's the first two, is the same as DE, the first two back here. BC, the second two, is the same as EF. And then AC and DF. So you see how the color coordination might help you. Um, get some colored pencils, some crayons, markers, whatever it is that you need, and it will help you to figure out which is congruent to which. This is just a easier way to look at the very last or at the last question. Should have all of this written down already. Just print it out a lot nicer than my handwriting. Okay. Write a congruent statements for the triangles. Identify all pairs of congruent corresponding parts. So as we look at these two triangles, when it says write a congruent statement, that's going to be the part where you start with the triangles. So triangle J, K, L is congruent to. Now, whenever you write this out, you have to list the parts in the same order. So J is the same as T. So it's congruent to triangle T. And K, you can tell by the two hoops, is congruent to S, which means lastly L is congruent to R. So your congruent statement is triangle JKL is congruent to triangle TSR. And it says identify all pairs. So you can start by either looking at here or looking at the figure. Angle J is congruent to angle T. Angle K is congruent to angle S. And angle L is congruent to angle R. So now we have all the angles. Now we have to do the sides. JK congruent to TS, KL is congruent to SR, and JL is congruent to TR. So that's all of our sides and all of our angles, along with your congruent statement at the top. Don't forget, you need to have that congruent statement. Okay, on to the next one. Now we're going to take what we just learned about uh, the congruent statements, and we're going to move forward to solve it. So, it says in the diagram, probably a comma in there, DEFG is congruent to SPQR. 
So D, E, F, G is congruent to S, P, Q, R. So that means that S is the same as D. E is the same as P. Q is the same as F. And lastly, G is the same as R. Okay? Now, if you look at the variables, at the top it said to solve for x and find the value of y. So x shows up twice. It shows up here in this side length. That should not be a degree sign. It shows up here in the side length, 2x minus 4. And it shows up here in 6y plus x. But because this has two different variables in it, we can't solve. So we have to solve the 2x minus 4 first. And that would be congruent to 12, because QR is the same as GF, or FG. So you just set this equal. 2x minus 4 equals 12. Add to 4 to both sides. 2x equals 16. Divide by 2, x equals 8. Now we can use this value and plug it in here. So it's 6y plus 8. Equals, then what is congruent to Q? Well, it's F. And F is 68 degrees. So it's equal to 68 degrees. Now you just solve for Y. 6y equals 60. So we have to subtract 8 from both sides. Divide by 6. You get y equals 10. And that's your solution to the question. This one. First, we need to start with a statement. Start with the statement that would have said A B G H is congruent to C D E F. Now knowing that, if we have to solve for x, it's going to be 4x plus 5 equals 105. I'll give you a hint on these types of questions. Um, the majority of the time, especially if it's a quadrilateral, not a triangle, the majority of the time, this is going to be equal to the only other number that's written in. So we subtract 5 from both sides. And you get 4x equals 100. Divide by 4, x equals 25. Now, if you plug that in here, 4 times 25 is 100, plus 5 is 105. You should always make sure that you get the same answer. Okay, that is about it. We're going to start the homework. Uh, tomorrow, I will have a recording where we go over the homework, and you get your next assignment.